This week I'm talking sex. I'm working with FPA, the Family Planning Association and Sexual Health Charity. You might not have heard of FPA before, but what if I told you that they've been talking sex for the past 87 years? So believe me when I tell you that they know their stuff. In fact, you've probably come across these guys before. You know the leaflets on sexual health that you get in GPs, clinics and hospitals? Well, the chances are they've probably been produced by FPA. These guys are much more than just leaflets. They're campaigners and thought leaders in the sex and relationship space. Their vision is to create a society where everyone can make positive choices about their sexual health and well-being. So why have I come to Northern Ireland to talk about sex? Well, I'm going to start by telling you something that I didn't know, and you might or might not either. The Abortion Act 1967 was never extended to Northern Ireland, and as such, 95% of women are unable to access abortion in their home country. Even if they have been raped, are a victim of incest or diagnosed with a fetal abnormality. Abortion here is prohibited in nearly all circumstances except where it can be proven that there is a direct threat to a mother's life, which in practice means very few cases indeed. Reports indicate that the number of women flying to England for an abortion is in the region of 1,000 per year. The principal alternatives available to women are to continue with a pregnancy for which they may be unable to cope or to seek dangerous pills online, risking both their bodies and potentially even imprisonment. The FBA's campaign, Time for Change, seeks to give women in Northern Ireland the right to choose. They're not pro-abortion, but they are advocates of choice. The FBA's office in Belfast has become a target for pro-life group Precious Life. Protesters regularly picket the entrance, accosting women going inside, brandishing posters of aborted fetuses, leaflets expounding the alleged risk of breast cancer after having an abortion, and chalk graffiti frequently lined the pavements. Of course, this is an emotive topic, and the majority of those who are anti-abortion are not extreme. And so, in the interests of balance, I visited Stormont, Northern Ireland's National Assembly, to talk to politicians about the issue. Our timing was terrible and the meeting was bumped after Martin McGuinness's resignation last week, the announcement by Sinn Féin that they would not be fielding a replacement and the resultant election in March this year. Sadly, this means that any ground made by the FPA, such as the private members' bills, will now fall away and they must start the lobbying process again. We've talked a lot about their campaign work, but the FPA are also key players in the provision of sex and relationship advice in school, and in particular to those with learning disabilities. I accompanied advisor Joe out to a school in Dundonald, Dr B's cafe in Belfast, and the urban farm at Kilcraggan. And armed with a flat white and a hipster artisan sandwich, I also returned to Hoxton and Shoreditch to see this innovative project for myself and the great work this charity is doing in helping pupils to have healthy, safe and fulfilling friendships and relationships. Sadly, that's all we've got time for this week, but if you'd like any more information, please read the blog or check out the FPA's website. Thank you for watching this week's video on FPA, the sexual health charity. Don't forget, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, then you can subscribe using the button right there. I'll see you guys uh, next week where I'm joining the Trussell Trust food bank charity. See you later.